Today's notes involve solving radical equations. So in the equations that we're gonna be solving today, you're gonna to see a radical sign either on one side or both sides of the equal sign. So the steps that you're gonna to take to solve the equations today are to first isolate the radical. Now, what does that mean? That means to get the radical all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So the radical and everything underneath it, the radicand on one side of the equal sign. So that means I need to, in this example over here that we're gonna do at the same time that we go through these steps, we need to get rid of that minus three. How do I do that? I'm gonna add three to both sides. And now I'm left with the square root of X equals three. And now I have now isolated the radical. The second step tells me to raise the expressions on each side of the equal sign to the power equal to the index of the radical. So let's recall that your index, if this is the nth root of a, the index is that root right there. Okay, so if you have a square root, there's an assumed two right there, right? Uh, if it were a cube root, it'd be a three. Fourth root, it'd be a four. So what I'm gonna do to get rid of the radical, because that's my next step, I need to raise both sides to the power equal to that index. So I need to raise both sides to the power of two. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So what that does is that gets rid of the radical. So now it's like you can just take away that radical and write what is left underneath it. But remember, we're squaring both sides. So three squared is nine. And then your last and final step is to simplify, solve, and check your solutions. So in this case, we've actually already solved it. It's x equals nine. But to check your solutions, you'll wanna take that nine and plug it in for x and make sure that your solution is valid. So if we substitute nine in for x, we get the square root of nine minus three equals zero. What is the square root of nine? It's three. Three minus three equals zero and zero equals zero. So our solution is valid. And that won't always be the case today as you'll see in some examples, but we will get to those. So examples one through four are just your basic examples. And we're gonna go through each of these. Number one, we need to isolate the radical first. So I need to get rid of that four coefficient first. So how do I undo the four or undo the times four? I divide it. So we're gonna divide by what we wanna get rid of, which is the four. And we're left with the square root of X equals two. So now this is the square root of X equals two. I need to get rid of that radical. Remember, if you don't see an index there, it's an assumed two, right? It's a square root. So how do I get rid of that? I raise it to the power of two. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other so that my equation stays balanced. When I do that, I get X equals four. And that's my answer. And if you wanna check your work, we can check it by plugging in four for x. So four times the square root of four equals eight. Four times the square root of four is four times two, and eight equals eight. So we've checked our work and our solution is valid. In example number two, I need to isolate the radical. So what do I need to do first? I need to divide both sides by two, and I get the cube root of x plus four equals three. And now I need to get rid of the radical. How do I do this? I raise it to the power that's equal to the index. So if that index is three, I'm gonna raise it to the power of three. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I take the cube root of something, whatever it is, and then I raise it to the power of three, these undo each other. That's why I'm left with x plus four equals three cubed is three times three times three, that's 27. And then to get X all by itself, I'm just gonna solve this one step equation and that equals 23. And I can plug it in for X and um, I would get a valid solution. I'm actually not gonna do that for every single one of these for the sake of time, um, but you will wanna check your work, especially when we get to the point where we have two solutions. So on example number three, I need to isolate the radical. How do I do that? I divide both sides by negative three. And I get the fourth root of two X plus seven 
equals 2. So now I need to get rid of that radical. What do I do? I'm going to raise this to the power of 4, right, because that's the index. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That effectively gets rid of that radical, and I'm left with the radicand, right, what's underneath the radical, and that's 2x plus 7. When I raise 2 to the power of 4, I get 16. And now I'm just going to solve this basic two-step equation. So minus 7, minus 7, and I get 2x equals 9 divided by 2, and I get, oh no, it's an improper fraction, and that's completely okay. I like to throw these in my notes because a lot of students, even at the Algebra 2 level, are very uncomfortable getting an improper fraction as your answer. And a lot of answers at the upper level math are not just your super pretty nice little answers. They can be kind of ugly. So I've zoomed in on example number four and I've actually switched it up a bit. So this looks like the square root of 3x plus 10 equals 2. So I want to get rid of the radical on the left side of the equal sign. So I'm going to square that entire expression with that radical. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. This gets rid of that radical and I'm left with 3x plus 10 equals 4. And now I'm just going to solve this basic two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides, and I get negative 6. And when I divide both sides by 3, I get x equals negative 2. And you can always check your work by plugging in negative 2 for x right here. So for example, in your original equation, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 equals 2. So my solution is valid. This is my answer. Let's move on to example number 5. Number 5. So I have the square root, and these examples, 5 and 6, are examples with the radical on both sides of the equal sign. So now, you know, in examples one through four, we had a radical on one side. In these examples, we have a radical on both sides. So the index is the same, right? So I have the square root of 6x equals 2 times the square root of x minus 4. How do I get rid of those radicals? I raise this to the power of 2. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And now notice I do this to the entire expression on the right side of the equal sign. So what happens on the left side? If I take the square root of 6x and I square it, I'm left with 6 times x. On the right side, I have to distribute that square into each specific term, right? So I've got 2, and then I've got times the square root of x minus 4. So 2 squared is 4, and then the square root of x minus 4 squared is just x minus 4. So that's what that looks like whenever you square that side of the equal sign. So what do we need to do now? We need to simplify the right side. So I'm going to distribute that 4 into each term on the inside of the parentheses. And then I'm just going to solve for x. So move my variable terms to one side. And I get 2x equals negative 16. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2. And I get x equals negative 8. And I can check my work as well. You can uh, go through, plug it in. Again, I'm not really going to take a lot of time to do that right now, just for the sake of time. So number six is the exact same type of problem. So I've got a radical on both sides. We want to remove that radical. So I'm going to raise both sides to the power of the index. So I'm going to square both sides. So what happens to both sides? I'm left with 3x plus 8 equals, and then what is the right side of my equal sign going to look like? 25, right? Because 5 squared is 25, and then that radical goes away. 25 times x. And now let's move our variable terms to one side. So minus 3x, I'm going to move it to that side. 8 equals 22x. What do I do at this point? Divide both sides by 22 to get x all by itself. And I'm left with 8 over 22 equals x. And if I simplify it by dividing by 2, I get 4 over 11 equals x. And that's my answer. Let's move on to the next section. 
In this example, we're going to check for extraneous solutions. So let me see if I can change colors here. If it'll let me, it doesn't always let me. So you may recall that extraneous solutions are solutions that we get while we're solving a problem algebraically, but they're actually not valid solutions. They don't really work. They work when we're solving the problem algebraically, but they're really not real solutions. So how do we check for extraneous solutions? We will use substitution at the end. So what I haven't been doing on each problem, checking my answers, that's what we're gonna make sure we do, especially when we get two solutions, okay? So in example number seven, this says a square root of x plus 14 equals x plus two. So I need to get rid of this radical. I'm gonna take the same steps that we've done to each, in each example, and I'm gonna square both sides, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other, and notice I do this to the entire expression. So I'm left with x plus 14 equals, and in this case, I've got a perfect square, or I'm gonna end up with a perfect square trinomial. So x plus two times x plus two, when I FOIL this, I get x squared plus four x, plus four. So x squared plus four x plus four. And how do we solve an equation like this? Get all your terms on one side, so and set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna minus x and minus 14, minus x and minus 14. And notice I write each like term underneath the term that it's alike with. Did that make sense? So this minus x, I wrote it under this four x. And then minus 14, I wrote it under this four. So I'm left with zero equals x squared plus three x minus 10. So now I need two terms that multiply to negative 10 and add to positive three. When I factor this quadratic trinomial, my factors are positive five and negative two. So it'll factor like this, x plus five times x minus two. And then if I use the zero product property to solve this, I get my two solutions as negative five and positive two. So especially when you get two solutions, you always wanna go back and check your work. We need to make sure that both of these solutions are valid. If they're not, then we have an extraneous solution. So I'm gonna use substitution and I'm going to plug in each of these values into my original equation for the value of x. So I'm gonna first look at negative five. So I'm gonna plug in negative five for x right there and negative five for x right there. And I'm gonna get the square root of negative five plus 14. Is it equal to negative five plus two? Negative five plus 14 is positive nine. Positive nine equals negative five plus two is negative three. The square root of negative nine is, or I'm sorry, the square root of nine is three does it equal negative three? It does not, which means negative five is an extraneous solution. It is not a valid solution. So let's write that down. This is an extraneous solution. It actually doesn't really work. So we're, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check the other solution and show you what it looks like for it to be a valid solution. Now I'm gonna plug in two for X. So I'm gonna plug in two for x right there and two for x right there. So let's do this again. So I'm gonna get the square root of two plus 14 equals two plus two. So does it equal two plus two? Two plus 14 is 16. So the square root of 16, does it equal two plus two is four? The square root of 16 is four. Does four equal four? Yes, it does, which means this is a valid solution. So your solution is x equals two. Let's move on to examples eight and nine. So when you have a problem that contains rational exponents, they're really the same, oh, can I move on? They're really the same as the problems that we've been doing, okay? So you might, you might not have to do this very first step, but what I like to do is rewrite the expressions with rational exponents in radical form. So I'm gonna have you rewrite them to look like all of the examples that we just did. So in example number eight, five X plus two to the power of one third equals three, 
Well, if I rewrite this rational exponent in radical form, that's the same thing as the cube root of 5x plus 2 equals 3. And now we've got an equation that looks like all of the examples that we just did. So how do I get rid of this radical? I'm going to raise it to the power of 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So by raising the left side to the power of 3, I get rid of that radical, and I'm left with 5x plus 2 equals 3 cubed is 27. And now I'm just going to solve this two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. 5x equals 25, and I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 5. So let's move on to example number 9. In example number 9, we've got the same type of situation. We've got a rational exponent. I'm going to rewrite it as a radical so that it looks the same as all of the previous examples. But again, some of you may not have to do this first step. You might know, hey, I need to square both sides to get rid of that rational exponent. So I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of 4x plus 5 equals x. And now I need to get rid of that radical. How do I do that? I square both sides. And I'm left with 4x plus 5 equals x squared. I have an x squared, so now I need to get every, um, every term on one side of the equal sign. I like to have a positive a value, so I'm going to move this minus 4x and negative 5 over. So I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. See how I did that? So I moved every term to one side of the equal sign because I know if I have an x squared, I'm going to have to factor. I'm probably going to have multiple solutions, and then I'm going to have to check for extraneous solutions at this point. So now I need to factor this quadratic trinomial, two numbers that multiply to negative 5 that add to negative 4. That's negative 5 and positive 1, so my factors look like this, x minus 5 times x plus 1, and my solutions are negative 1 and positive 5. But I've got two solutions here. So I really need to check for extraneous solutions. And you won't always have extraneous solutions when you have two solutions, but you need to make sure that you check for those. So I'm going to do that in this little area right here. I know there's not a lot of room, but let's check. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in negative 1 for x. Okay, so I'm actually going to rewrite this as the square root of 4x plus 5 equals x, and we're going to do this kind of in our head together. So when I plug in negative 1 for x, right there, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Okay, so that's how what I get on this side. Does it equal, if I plug in negative 1 on this side, does negative 1 equal negative 1? It does not, which means this is an extraneous solution. So I didn't write everything down just for lack of room, but that's how you might do that in your head. So let's go on to the next one and make sure that it is also, or that it is a valid solution. So when I plug in 5 for x right here, now I've got 4 times 5 is 20, 20 plus 5 is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. Does it equal, if I plug in 5 on this side, it does equal 5. So my answer for this is x equals, and I'm going to write it up here, 5. x equals 5. And that concludes your notes over solving radical equations. I hope it was helpful.